All right, so another way we could start looking at color is using some of the tools available to us already in Photoshop. You know, we can use Cooler. Um, Cooler is definitely my top choice. Um, another thing we could do is, because in the heat of the battle of painting something, you don't want to constantly go to Cooler and say, Cooler, please produce me a cool color. You want to be able to start formulating these colors and these degrees. Um, so, you know, when I'm looking at these these simple ones like uh, this one you know these are based upon a degree change in in here so these are all kind of at the same degrees let's say this uh, so this is probably negative of itself so if you take something like in introvert it it's just taking if it's right here on the color wheel negative 90 degrees away from that is going to be the same introverted color of this so if as long as you know the degrees on the color wheel you're fine and they are um, 120 negative 120 150 negative 150 and then they got 30 60 uh, changes along with um, so what I'm talking about here is if I know how to do this this is my hue saturation. This pretend this is the same as this. It's just laid out differently. If you can see the red switches all the way back to a red. Same with this. I really wish Photoshop would get off the idea of color strips because that's just stupid and get into more of this. If I take this whole document, let me take and duplicate it. Okay. And what I'm going to do is just kind of offset it a little bit, just like that. If I wanted to find all the colors that are in complementary color to every one of the other colors, well, I can just go like this, Image Adjustment Invert. Okay. Now, all these have their inverted colors over here. So this color would go to good with this color. This color right here goes good with this color. Um, and then you got your bright blues and very saturated blue and very saturated red. Here's two colors that match each other. Just because I've inverted it. And all that is is going from one end of the color wheel to the next. Now, that being said, I can also know that I can type the degrees of um, the color wheel here. So I can go 120. Okay. So now these are the two that match each other based upon a different harmony okay and then if I go negative 120 again these two go together these two go together and the other ones are um, 150 then negative 150 okay and if you want to get into uh, maybe the lightness of things. You can go in here and say 30. And what that'll do is just lower the value to it. And you can go negative 30, which will darken the value. So that you start to get into the monochromics. So as long as you know those degrees and know how to type them in, uh, you can come up with ideas that are in balance or harmony with each other without going to cooler all the time. The problem is formulating that in here because in the heat of the battle, I do not want to go to, oh, let's say 120 degrees. That took too long. So that's where we start getting into the tools. And in here we have dodge, burn, sponge. Okay. And then you know I showed you how to blend two colors using the smear tool so that's another way to do it so let's look at maybe the burn or dodge tool the burn tool if I take any color and burn it it's just gonna add some black to it okay and up its value now there's a thing called protect tones up here if I unclick that what will happen is it'll darken it but it'll darken it in a way of just adding black to it. So you don't want that. 
you'll want to if you're if you're thinking about monochromic colors which is just adding a tint of color to something you want to keep protect tones on because that way it doesn't add black what it does is keep stacking color onto it until it reaches black but it protects tones okay so the tonal range is very important and what's nice about this is you have highlights shadows so if you want to just affect the darker area of the color you can choose to do shadows if you want to do the highlights you can do the highlights um, notice here I have it on highlights but it's not attacking this one but this one it actually darkens it so that comes in very handy when you want to tweak out a color on a photograph but you only want to color or darken the shadow part of it so now burn is one thing dodge is just adding it in the opposite area so instead of tweaking colors monochromically darker this is monochromically up okay so if I went to shadows and went into this ball I can go like this and I can closely get it as bright as I can and it'll go up in value to the point where it goes this way on the color wheel so again you know just to kind of hit things home because I can quickly get into a subject if we're looking at monochromic values of things I'm looking at staying within the color on the color wheel but only going this way okay not any other degrees so I'm on a perfect degree angle and that's what the dodge and burn tool do they stay within one section like this alright so please move on to the next video where I can cover some more of this stuff